Welcome back again, everyone. Last week, we looked at Psalm 31. Kind of run through that chapter as quickly as we possibly could. We are uh, moving on to Psalm 32 here in a moment, but let's rem- let's take a walk down memory lane to last week when we looked at Psalm 31. Brother Jarrett, he's going to start us off. Yes. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah. Word for word line from his uh, crucifixion. But Larry? To me, it seemed like he kept going back and forth. One minute he was encouraged, and then it seemed like he was just sitting there. Back and forth. Yeah, and, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, kind of a. a summation and then a. kind of more detailed look as he went through the chapter but yes I mean but we, we we looked at the at the ups and downs of of Christian life and whatnot through uh kind of displayed in Psalm 31 anybody else yeah um basically two lines of thinking on Psalm 31 it was either written when he was on the run from Saul or on the run from Absalom um and either one, it it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It was it was a, um, a another examination of how David was feeling when he was being pursued, and and what that um, and what that brought upon his uh, his life. Anybody else? Yep. Yeah, we 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 talked a little bit about um verse 10 for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing my strength faileth because of my iniquity and my bones are consumed. And the importance for I mean there were a whole lot of reasons for why he made the uh, the uh, the mention of this in verse 10, but we also kind of alluded to the fact that um the time to serve the Lord is right now because Old age and, and 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 honestly, sin, the corruption of the flesh, it's gonna catch up with you eventually. We're not as good. We're not as good as now as we were yesterday, and we're and and we're better now than we will be tomorrow. <laughs> and in every day, as 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 uh, disheartening as it could be, we are all prone to in, in, entropy, decay, and death. We are we're going to uh, uh, we're we're all just sp- spinning ourselves down to our appointed time. Uh, and so it, it is not necessarily the number of days, but with what we do with them that it makes the most. I mean, it, if, a, if, a, if a pickup truck, let's, I feel like this actually might be true, is only supposed to last five years, um, but you know you're going to get five out, years out of it regardless of what you're going to do with it, you're going you're gonna to wear the tires off of that thing and get every bit of your five years out of it. Now, we don't know how long we've got. We may have five years. We may have five seconds. We may have 55 years. We don't know how long we've got left, but we need to be wearing the tires off of the time, the time that we got left and, and put more uh, mileage, if you will, to the time that we begin because uh, uh, every day we grow less and less capable in the flesh of serving the Lord. Anybody else? Right. And that's one of my favorites. Yeah, the um a call for bravery in the face of fear with the promise of strength to continue and then hope. And the 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 the, the people that should be doing all ye that hope in the Lord that 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 Place your faith in Him. That that, that that look forward to Him. That 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 see Him. Any other questions or any other comments? He does. Yes. Oh, love the Lord, all ye saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful, and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Um, David calls for us to 
to love the Lord. And, and of all the things that are often, and we've pointed this out last week, but of all the things that are pointed out in Scripture, very rarely are we called upon, we're called upon to praise Him, we're called upon to worship Him, we're called upon Him to serve Him, but to be explicitly be told to love Him is, is less common and a little bit more unique. And um, love being an emotion, love being a... Um, uh, a, a, a feeling that can't be just um, a lot of people think falling in love is just snap and a, a lot a lot of that has a lot more to do with uh, biology if you will than actual love love is a process that takes time um, and uh, and it involves putting time into a relationship uh, we looked into that a little bit in the last lesson anything else That will bring us to Psalm 32, a psalm of David. Superscription is this Hebrew word, which I will not pretend, uh, pretend that I can pronounce, but uh, M-A-S-C-H-I-L. Maskell. Um, it is a... A Hebrew word that, that that is about instruction. It's about um, guidance, and that is kind of what this chapter sort of covers. But it it it, it this chapter is all about transgression and forgiveness. is is the largest uh, uh, force of the chapter, and um, is kind of a model, if you will. On 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 how we should deal with sin and how and how not dealing with sin how it will affect us. Uh, the first verse is uh, reads, uh, uh, "Blessed is he who, tran who whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and who and in whose spirit there is no guile." The first two verses. I think offer something unique to saved people for those that, that, that look to the Lord for salvation. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Um, two different things pointed out there. Uh, forgiven transgression, th th there, there, is, there, is, there is grace, there is, uh, there is mercy in there. And then it goes a step further and says, whose sin is covered. We, it's not just we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna forgive you and then we're gonna you're gonna put this off for a little while. I mean, a lot like the Hebrew sacrifices were kind of intended to do. You you paid sacrifices for today's sins, but tomorrow's sins were not taken care of. You would have to offer another turtle dove or another lamb or and and every yearly sacrifice uh, that covered that year's sins, but next year's sins were not covered. Um, David offers an idea here that was, um, uh, in a sense, available at his time, but by the way that they worshiped the Lord under Jewish law, was not. Um, this is kind of a forward-thinking idea, if you will, that sin could be covered, that there that there was a sacrifice out there and coming that could wash away the sin that 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 uh that that whose blood when painted upon the doorpost of the heart the death angel would pass um and it said blessed uh, blessed is the man whom the lord imputeth not iniquity this goes further in in with this idea where it is it's not just saying you're forgiven it's not just saying you're covered it's that the lord that god cannot based on what he can see, look and say the iniquity is your fault, that, that, you're, that you're by default iniquity. To, to, in, to, be, to, in, to impute something is to say, this is, this is the thing based on evidence that I've seen. And this says here that uh, unto the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. That, that means that he can look down at any one of our sin-torn and, and tattered, ragged, moth-eaten, 
worm-driven hearts and say, looks clean to me. Looks as perfect as the blood that covers it. Looks as righteous as my son's perfect life. Looks good to me. And in whose spirit is no guile. This is deceit. Uh, but uh, this is uh, someone with a... Um, I've, I've heard spirit looked at in a, in a, in a, in a bunch of different ways. But, uh, you know, is it the spirit of man? Is it is your personality? Is it your soul? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a whole lot of, 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 of different... But basically that there's no... There's no deception. There's no lie. There's no, there, there is no sin there. Uh, these two verses, David looks for and says, if, if, you can look, if you can look at all these things and you can check all these boxes, you're in a very, very blessed position. Depending on how you look at the Old Testament and the Old Testament law, a lot of those people in the Old Testament, I believe they look forward to a better day, but they weren't direct benefactors of things that we take for granted. They weren't they 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 had not seen a completed sacrifice. They'd not seen a resurrected savior. They'd not had the benefit of a completed gospel. And I think David's looking forward and says you people and I think he's specifically talking to New Testament age people who, ha- who have seen the opening of, of Matthew 1 and the closing of, of, of John and seen a completed gospel and said, that, that you, you people, you're blessed because of, the, of what you have, of, of, of what you are, are, are capable of um, attaining is, right, is not the right word, capable of inheriting, of, of being given, of being blessed with. You are blessed. Verse 3, when I kept my silence, my bones waxed old through, uh, through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the draught of summer, Selah. David kind of switches gear. He, ta- he talks about early about, about the forgiveness of transgression and not being imputed for sin and, and, and having your sin covered. And then he starts talking about this grieving time, verses three and four, he says, he says, my, I, I kept, why, when I kept my silence, my bones waxed old through all my roaring all the day long. For the uh, for day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. David was uh, is describing, I think, the weight of guilt that comes with sin that is not um, that is not asked for forgiveness for. You know, th- th- this this is the thing we think, uh, and, and and actually, I, it was the I usually try to attach a verse to our live streams, and I just go through the Bible and just pick out something that just stands out to me, and then that's that goes the verse that goes with the live stream for Sunday morning stuff. Um, and it was it was interesting today that one of the ones that stood out to me is where Paul said in Romans. Uh, that should we uh, should we sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. And, and this is and and this is something that we often forget as Christians. We 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 have we, we as as saved people we have a a beautiful gift in the grace of our Lord in the covering of our sins. Every sin that you will ever commit is is covered under that contract. But make no mistake, your transgressions of the law in your flesh as a saved person, you must address. What that affects is not your never dying soul. It is, it is without question, based upon the beliefs that we have, that our that our soul is 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 bought and sealed and locked up and no and, and no man holds the key save our Lord. Right. But what that does affect is your relationship with God. Think about your relationship with your parents. I'm sure I did, I, 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 I'm even more than sure, I know I did things and probably still do things that grate against my parents. And you know what that does? That strains relationships. If my children do something that I have explicitly told them not to, 
it grates against that relationship. It strains the ties that bond us together. Will it ever break them? I am always, and my parents will always be, whether they like it or not, my parents. I will always be the father to my children. There is a blood tie there. There is a genetic bond. There is, a, there, there is an emotional bond that cannot be severed. But it will strain those things to the point of breaking. Why should we ask forgiveness for sins that arguably are covered under the law of God? Why shouldn't we just go and live the way that we want to? There's a whole lot of reasons. There's a whole lot. I, I could get into an hour and a half of, 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 of reasons why we shouldn't do those things. But the real thing is your personal relationship with God is at jeopardy. God will not be within a thousand miles of someone who is living in direct conflict with his word. We take the Bible as the ultimate authority on everything, and then we a lot of times we take the law, the Pentateuch, we take, we take a lot of the stuff in the Old Testament and we toss it out the door. Why? Because specifically the Pentateuch, the, 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 the law of God that was handed down to the Israelites is super astringent. It, it, it holds man to a standard with which we're not capable of holding. And, and, and literally within the law it says you're incapable of taking care of this. So here also is a long list of things you can do to take care of things that you're not capable of controlling yourself because you're flesh. And we don't like the law because we're still held under the standard of it. Am, am I trying to get us all to become, you know, uh, uh, messianic Jews or anything? No, that's not, but, but we are still responsible to the Ten Commandments. And, and I think that's proven out in the New Testament. Jesus directly references the Ten Commandments when they say, what is the greatest commandment? It says, well, love God and love man. Yeah. And, and if you look at the Ten Commandments, if you look at the whole of the law as they're kind of expanded out from the ideas within the Ten Commandments, if you love God and you love man, you will keep the whole law, but we're not capable of doing those things. And so we fail, just as the Israelites fail. And, and, but we are in a privileged position because we don't have to, when we fail, go and offer something at the tabernacle, go speak to the, to the high priest about what we've done, go and offer a bullock upon the brazen altar, uh, uh, need these things to to uh, uh, maintain our sanctification. We, we, we have it all. And so we forget the part that we actually are responsible for, and that is confession. A lot of people, and especially in Baptist circles, and I, I'll even say that I'm, I'm, I'm part of it, we like to make fun of the ABCs, the, this you know, theory where you can kind of uh, uh, you know, tiptoe and walk your way up to Calvary um, with, with, the, uh, with the sinner's prayer. And, and I don't think God's within a thousand miles of, it, of that, but confession is part of that thing. And you know what? Confession is a, is a, is a real part of Christian life that literally nobody, nobody even... It's not even in people's ballpark anymore. Right. And I'm not talking, and, and I think this is good too because it offers humility to the person that, that committed it. I'm not even necessarily talking about confession to a, other of God's people. I'm talking about just good old-fashioned go in your closet and confess to God what you've done. And God demands it. He's demanded it all the way since Genesis. When Cain slew Abel, what did he say? He said, where is your brother? I'm, I'm, this is paraphrasing, of course. And he says, am I my brother's keeper? He says, the voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. He basically said, Cain, what have you done? And Cain refused <laughs> to confess to God what he'd done. From the very beginning, uh, let's go back even further. His parents, Adam and Eve, who told you you were naked? They didn't, they didn't want to confess what they'd done. Why? They, they sewed themselves together some, some, uh, some fig leaves, made themselves some, uh, made themselves some clothes, and they hid in the woods. And when God came for their regular evening walk together, Adam, where are you? Did God need to know? God knows that you've sinned. His withdrawal of his spirit from you is evidence he knows when you sinned. He wants you to know that he knows that you've sinned. Confession is super important. And verses 3 and 4 of Psalms, to bring it all the way back to where we, what we started talking about, is the effect of just sitting around holding your sin. It says the weight. Verse 4, 
your, uh, the, thy hand was heavy upon me, and my moisture is turned to the drought of summer. He was sweating. <laughs> he, 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 he was upset. He was guilty about your sin. So, so you, you, you've probably seen in cartoons, when somebody's guilty of a lie in a cartoon, a lot of times they'll get cartoon sweat come out on them. Why? Because, because the, the, in, in, a, in a silly, pictographic manner, they're trying to display that this character has guilt for something that they did that they don't want the other person to know. And it pops out on them in big old fat droplets of water. And David said, it's, it's weighing on me. He says, my bones waxed old. It was weakening. It was tiresome. It was heavy. It was a weight around him. And we just carry this along through our whole life. Why, why, why do, you know, we've talked, we've, everybody likes to talk about, why is there no joy in Baptist churches anymore? And blah, 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 blah. Well, if you carry around the weight of your sin by yourself, day after day, week after week, month after month, you're going to get tired. You're going to be sad. You're going to be depressed. The weight and the strain of your own sin and wagging it around by yourself will kill you one day. Verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Solution. Resolution. Verse 5 offers an alternate path to walking around holding your sin. Confession. It says, I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. I'm tired of holding on to all this. I'm going to do something about it. He went and confessed. And then you have a semicolon, which means that this next part is, 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 is connected to the first. It says, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Was there hesitation on the part of God? I, I don't read any here. Was there here, you know, I'll, I'll get back to you once I'm done being angry. Uh, I'll, you know, you, you, you need, you, I, need, I, need I have, I'm gonna, it's going to take some time for, for me to get over this. He, says, he forgave him. Relationship restored. When my children step out of line, and then they come meekly to me, asking, I'm sorry. They want a hug. They, what are they doing? They're trying, to, they're trying to reestablish that relationship. They want things back to the way it was before. They, they, and, and, and you know what? My heart is softened by that. I go from being staunch and angry and, 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 uh, and, and disappointed in their actions to joy and happiness. I think it's evident from the Scriptures our God is capable of emotions, and He enjoys when His children come to Him and make things right. He doesn't want you to walk astray. And I, and I do believe that, that, that sounds almost like a, you know new agey almost, but, but it's, it's bore out in Scriptures. He left the 90 and 9 to go seek one. You're his, and so he's not going to let you go. But if you just keep wandering and wandering and wandering and doing your own thing, you might find yourself down at a hog lot before you wake up and say, you know what, there, there, there are servants in my house that eat better than, I'm, than I am, and I am my Lord's son. <laughs> for every one... Um, for every, uh, for uh, blah, 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 I don't know what I'm reading here. For this shall, uh, for this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not. Uh, 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 surely in the floods of great waters they shall not uh, uh, come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with uh, with songs of deliverance. Selah says, top of verse 6, For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. A earmark of a saved person. We like to point out a lot of earmarks, and a lot of them is how righteous do they act. And, 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 and that is a, a, a really good indicator. But here's a, a little personal indicator. Just check your own temperature, if you will. 
How ready are you to confess? It says here, everyone that is godly. Th- that, that is a measurement. Are you godly or are you not? Are you carrying sin or are you confessing it? Saved people will confess their sin to God, will look at their sin, be disgusted by their sin, and it may take some time. They may be like the prodigal son in the hall, and they, and they literally come to them and say, what am I doing? Where am I at? How far have I gone from home? But everyone will make that realization, every single one, by this standard, by the standard of, 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 the, of the Scripture. Thou art my hiding place, and thou shalt preserve me from trouble. So, transgression, confession, and then safety. There's safety in the arms of Jesus. There's protection in, in that hedge. I, I, I don't think that that hedge that the Satan talked to God about when he was talking about Job is an exclusive thing that just Job had. I think each and every one of us have the ability <laughs> to get inside the hedge, to, to find ourselves in a place that is protected. But to be there, we have to be close to God. And if you're not close to God, you're just wiling out there on your own. You're, you're, you're running about doing your own thing. I will instruct thee and teach thee in, in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as a horse, nor as a mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come, uh, uh, lest they come uh, near unto thee. Many sorrows shall uh, be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Now, if you look at um, verse 8, it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I think we have a little bit of a shift in who's speaking here. This is God. I will instruct you in the way that you're going to go. So we've had transgression, we've had confession, we found a safe place, and now it's time for us to look to the guidance of our Lord because often that's where we get off when it comes to our own iniquity and our own transgression. We have a path set before us, and oftentimes every single path we come to, people love decisions, people love free will. This is where we have free will. There's a fork in the road. Which path are you going to take? Or am I going to go God's way or am I going to go my way? And we go our way repeatedly at times. And God ways, God's way is a path that seemingly gets growed up as, we, as, it, as it waits on us to get back. But he says, I will, instru- I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And then he makes this allusion, Be not as a horse or a mule which have no understanding whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. What, what, he, he, he's talking about instructing an animal. Animals, have, a, a horse or a mule, has to be guided with, with, with tools that literally pull on them and hurt them to force them to go any way. A, 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 a well-trained animal... You have to do that less. It, it just barely takes a, a, a shift in the reins, and, and they're already doing the thing. Why? Because they're they're broken to the will of their master. They know they know when there's a little bit of shift on this on this right hand side. Oh, he wants me to go right, and here I go. And God wants us. It, 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 I think the New Testament makes allusions very similar to this about trying the reins of the heart and and and, and all this stuff. But. Um, Psalms wants us to go a, a, a little bit further. He doesn't want us to have to have reins. He wants us to listen to the instruction of the Lord and then do it. He wants us to act like the intelligent creatures that He created us to be. We shouldn't have to be like animals that have to have to have pain inflicted upon them to learn, okay, if I do something wrong, there's pain. If I do something right, there's no pain. God gave us, we are built a level above the animals. And anybody that's watching on the stream, if you have any doubt, we're, 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 we, didn't, we didn't come from monkeys. We, 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 we're not, we're not, we're not, we're, we, weren't, we weren't created by a series of random happenstances. God created us specifically to rule 
this planet and, t and, and take care of it. Everything here is beneath us. Animals, plants, the land, it's, 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 all, it's all for us. That doesn't mean we should treat it like garbage. He gave it to us to be caretakers of. But he, the Lord's literally calling upon us to be here too. I don't want to have to put the bridle on you. When I tell you to go on a path, just don't fight me on it. Don't be a dumb animal where I have to, I have to yank on you to get you to go one way or the other. Be supple and open to God's will. When, when the Lord says, this is the path that we're going on, you say, yes, Lord. You put your hand to the plow, and you don't look back. Many sorrows shall be uh, to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye uh, that are upright in heart. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. I don't think being wicked is exclusive to just lost people. In fact, I almost know it's not. Wicked is a reference to wickedness, which is an action that we're all capable of. And you can look at the in verse 3 and 4 of this chapter and see the travail of holding on to your sin, just staying in your sin. You can, there's plenty of examples in the Bible about just wallowing in your yeah. sin and where that will lead, lead you to. And Psalms makes no, uh, makes no uh, objection to any other part of the Scriptures in that idea. It says, many sorrows. It says, well, it looks like the world's having a, 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 a beautiful time. I'm sure they are. This, this is as good as it gets for them. Right. For people that are lost and, and, and literally predestined for hell... I'm sure this is a party because this is the last party they're expected to have. But make no mistake, sorrows are coming for them. And let's be real, this, this, the, a lot of the sins that they get involved with, they catch up with them eventually. You can party and you can drink and you can have a big time. You don't even have to, you don't even have to live a, a riotous life. But, but your sin does catch up to you eventually. Every uh, and a lot of them are physical consequences to sin. If you're an alcoholic, your liver will find you one day. If you're if you're a if 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 you're someone that is given to uh, uh, a wanton sexual sin, there are a list of diseases that come with that activity. There 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 are even for law for 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 predestined lost people there are consequences and, and, and finding ourselves for saved people it's even worse because you're literally rebelling against your soul nature and God has to chastise for that God has to ha has to correct you for that and then God ultimately has to withdraw from that because his spirit is not going to rest with a sinner with, with, with people that are just looking at the sacrifice that Jesus paid and then just tossing it in the mud and that, that is what you're doing. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Now he says, he, he offers this for the people that aren't walking at a guilty distance from the Lord. He says, for those of you that are upright in heart, be glad, be happy, shout and praise the Lord, because He is with you. And, and for how long? Probably until the next time you tell a little white lie or 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 or, or, or you know uh, do, do something else that is in 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 uh, objection to God's law but it for for and I'm I, I know I'm not I haven't arrived there but for you that are walking in a straighter path uh, there's a job for you here too rejoice ye righteous and shout for joy that you should be happy where's the happiness I I I think I think Unconfessed transgressions will lead to a lack of joy and a clean conscience and a, and, and a pure heart will lead to happiness. And you're going to see that bore out in God's people. And I think that's why we have a church, churches full of Baptist people that aren't happy because they are, they are holding on to their sin and they are not letting it go. 
You cannot serve two masters. Either, you, either you'll hate the one and you'll love the other. Either you'll love the one and you'll hate the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't do both. Questions, comments on Psalm 32? Brother Jarrett. Yep, yep. Yeah. The transitive property of His redemption covering our sin. It is good that He starts this chapter about confession, though, with the idea that we're going to talk about this, but always know that you're, you're never going to break that bond, that, that, that forever your debt is settled. And I think, I think the first two verses do away with the sacrificial part of the law. That's why we don't have to find a brazen altar and offer a bullock up because we, we did, all the bullock and brazen altar stuff has been taken care of by someone who offered a far more worthy sacrifice. Now, Roman, Ro, I, would, I would say a study of 32 with, Rome, with, with especially the early chapters of Romans would be, would be a good pairing. You, you, could, you could find a lot of synergy there. Of course, you know, Paul being a, a master among uh, uh, Jewish teachers, he probably was fully aware of that as he was writing. Uh, any, uh, any other questions or comments? If not, you are dismissed. Have a great week. Thank you.